Now, a lot of you guys have requested that I try out the new implant with the faction carriers with the versatile solo ships, and don't worry, I will do that. And my apologies uh, if this took uh, very long. My device basically died a couple days ago, and I had to wait for the replacement to arrive. And now I am back in action. And I'll be starting with the Vazago. I've been told that the Vazago became really nasty with the aerospace implant. And I can kind of see why. Uh, the Vazago and I believe the villain have some of the, the highest DPS outputs out of any uh, faction care in the game. And of course I have to mention that the versatile solo chips have been buffed. They're very close, well very close. They're very similar to super cares in in the way how they work now. They have received some new row bonuses and you know things like that. Now in this case the, the Vazago here, the Vazago is kind of odd because it is a angel ship and it has a bonus on the capital emergency hull energizer and it also has a bonus on damage control. But the ironic thing is you can't really have both of these modules at the same time on your ship. So this is kind of uh, a weird thing uh, because usually I, I like that I like to use every single module that the ship has a bonus for, but in this case you can't because you can't fit two damage controls on the ship. I'll show you what I'm talking about. And of course, the Vazago has received some extra medium slots. Now it has five medium slots, which honestly is pretty fantastic for these things. They really needed to have uh, a extra minus especially the the astarte the astarte was uh, suffering from uh, from low medium slots now it's actually much better 12,084.90 dps now i'm using the classic lightweight ships with the faction ones the dps skyrockets and it's very similar in some cases i would say uh, better than the dps that you can get on the cn carry but the ship can't get in high sec and yeah that's basically the the thing that still goes for the cn carry because it can go to high sec this one can't and here this is the capital emergency hole energizer but you can't fit it because you can only fit well one type of the same module technically it's not the same module, but they also kind of count as damage control, so yeah. Unfortunately, you, you can't put two of them, uh, two of, well, not exactly two of them, you can't put a damage control and a capital damage control uh, in the same uh, in the same ship. And of course, the rigs will be for DPS, and the hangar bay will be for destroyers. That's the, destroyers still have, like, the, the best damage replication and I'm very curious to see how they'll perform uh, with the aerospace tactic implant. This is the implant with the current attributes that I'll be using for this video. Now the aerospace implants at level 30 is actually very useful for uh, lightweight ships. It uh, basically extends their uh, their range. Since the, ver the versatile slow ships have a shorter control range by default, a much shorter control range. The normal carriers can take about 500 kilometers, the versa slow ship about 200, and maybe even less uh, when, well, when the when the special mode is active, but there is no special mode anymore, so you don't have any sensor mode on these things. Only the super, on the, only the carrier partnership module. I almost call it the super carrier module because the super carriers have a very similar module. In general, the faction carriers are basically mini super carriers in a way. 90,567 DPS with the Vazago and here you can take a look at the stats of the lightweight ships. Now I, w I would use the the faction lightweight ships but unfortunately for some reason they seem to be bugged here on the test server so I didn't want to show you a bugged uh, a bugged weapon basically so I just went with the with the normal ones. 24,291.02 DPS, which honestly is actually really close to what the CN carrier can do. If I had the faction lightweight ships, this DPS would definitely surpass the DPS of the CN carrier. And of course, on top of having some extra DPS, the versatile solo ships also have a bit more tank. The tank on these ships has been buffed as well. 
Okay, now it's one thing to look at numbers on paper, a whole different Auto thing to actually engaged. go and test the a DPS out in combat and I'll be doing some laboratory missions today. Well, I usually do uh, laboratory missions with these ships. Even on the, on the live server, when I do get a laboratory mission, I whip out a, a carrier. You see a carrier sometimes, sometimes I borrow a, a Thanatos, sometimes a Chimera, you know, Warp things like that. Active. I usually borrow a, a variety of ships. And I say borrow, I don't have a... I don't really own a carrier myself at the moment. Maybe if I ever do get one, it's probably going to be a CN carry, but I don't know. I I'm still a cruiser pilot. I don't really do PvE that much, so I prefer my cruisers over any ship, to be honest. In any case, uh, I'm actually uh, very interested to see how this monster will work, because as I mentioned in the last video, when I was, well, in one of the last videos, when I was talking about the. Um, CN carrier with the decomposers and with the red hawks, with the red tail hawks. The normal destroyers use basically normal weapons. The catalysts use long range rifled small ray guns, the thrash uses cannons, and the chorister uses lasers. And they all have very attack. similar optimal range. I'll just go and basically add them. Uh, well, I'll have an orbit already set up to be uh, the average for all of the destroyers, destroyer lightweight ships. Now, what I find very interesting about this implant, uh, it basically does turn your, well, your lightweight ships into kind of a sentry drone mode, I guess. Although, not, not exactly, not exactly full sentry mode because, you know, sentries attack. don't move. Uh, the ships move and sentries We're have a, a much longer range with much poorer tracking but their DPS is really good. It's very... the the, the current this implant does put the the lighter ships in a very interesting position honestly. Uh, do, they do feel like sentries but they are not really sentries. Now that's what I'm trying to say. But uh, I just wiped out the first wave of well, first three, detected. the first two waves, like nothing. The We're under attack. the DPS application on this thing is downright terrifying. Now this is built to be a PVE ship, uh, not really something I would personally use because uh, I, I don't like my ships to be naked. Okay. If I see a naked ship, I get uncomfortable because these things get yeeted so quickly and they can be destroyed so fast. Having them naked like this, well, naked. When I say naked, I, I mean like full DPS, right? Uh, glass build. I'm not really a fan of having something, you know, this expensive, this glass, but it, it is still. The, one of the more popular builds uh, that you will encounter in the game. Now, the implant does extend the optimal range of your light ships or, or fighters or drones, so you can just basically warp at zero and launch the drones. And this is a very uh, interesting little tactic because it's basically the same thing that snipers do with, uh, with sentries, but in this case you do the same thing, but you are attack. not sniping, you're close to the to the enemies. You can technically still attack. snipe, although you have to wait for the fighters to reach the targets, and then you have to uh, click on the implant to improve the range and, and things like that, because you definitely scrambled. don't want to use the implant before the fighters are within the range, because <laughs> it's going to take eight years and perhaps perhaps seven like seven decades for the fighters to, to reach the destination with the implant active because they lose like 90% of their speed so yeah definitely uh, a not so not so much of a afk implant technically can be afk i guess if you land at zero but in no space i wouldn't be doing this uh, afk 
uh, since yeah uh, don't be AFK in all space with a ship like this I've personally seen so many carriers get just torn to shreds AFK because you know or they fall asleep in, in the Alliance uh, it's kind of funny so you definitely do not want to be sleeping or you know don't want to be fully AFK with with something detected. as this and honestly this thing just shreds I mean attack. I, I, I'm basically just clicking focus fire every We're time something pops attack. or sometimes I don't even get to click how quickly this I mean this is just it's it's really satisfying to just watch these ships pop this thing definitely the, the shreds I have I have no, I mean I'm, I have no comment this is a monster definitely uh, does apply more damage than the CNK that's for sure when you compare this video with the CN video you can definitely see the difference between the weapons and uh, you can see the difference between paper DPS and applied DPS this thing applies much more DPS than the CN here with the red tail hawks that's for sure like there's just no denying uh, I, I can clear a laboratory like, like I don't know how many how much time it took me to clear the, the laboratory with the CN I think like 15 minutes or maybe less Let, let's just say 50 minutes for one laboratory with the CN care it will take me like five minutes to clear this with uh, with this ship and it has less DPS than the CN care so that DPS number on on the fitting window isn't really everything, as you can see. Of course, uh, the the red tail hawks are very weird in a way. They have a good DPS. I like them, but uh, are they really like? Is it really worth to have the red tail hawks over normal fighters? When I see the performance of, of these monsters. I would. It's now my my personal view on that is moving towards that it's not worth to have the red tail hogs because why buy those when you can just have something much cheaper with that apply that does less damage on paper but applies more damage to a target. Interesting how that goes. I mean, it's nice to look at the high DPS number. That's for sure, but. But uh, overall, the the end performance is what matters the most, and I, I clear that this is basically like uncut uh, from start to finish. When I do the laboratory, uncut from start to finish, and warp drive active. And the, the Vazago, it, it, this is just a monster. I mean, I'm impressed by this thing. So, you guys were right. The Vazago became a monster uh, with the new implant. That that's just a fact now. It will be fun to see how the other versed uh, soldiers perform. I know that the Vazak or the Villain or the Anaconda actually. That there is like two of the... I think I have to double check that. But the, the Villain and the Vazago have basically I think the same stats. When it comes to uh, bonus on thirds and light with ship missiles. Because I know the Anaconda has a bonus on 10% uh, per skill level on missiles but 10.5% bonus on turrets. This monster has 10% on both and the villain We're and the villain should have 10% on both. We'll be, we'll be seeing how that, uh, how that goes in one of the next videos. So, uh, basically how I do this. I land at zero, I launch the fighters, I click on the implant and as you can see we are clearing the first wave uh, within the first 30 seconds. Now this is with maxed out skills, of course maxed out implant and the overall performance will be probably less but still uh, the overall average DPS is definitely much better than the overall average DPS of the Bombard Dacti implant. This implant for, for PvE is absolutely Enemy much better than the Bombardier game costs less I believe less uh, fuel let's say less implant fuel per use and overall uh, does give you 
a sustained VPS value, which in PvE is much better than having high burst. And this is... well... yeah. Uh, I'll, I, I just had to clear a second, I mean, I had to do a second one, because I cleared the first one so fast, I personally didn't really believe that... I, I believe that I messed up something with my modules. I didn't mess up anything. It just, you know, how it, how it works. It, it's just really good. And I'm very... Very impre I mean... I know it, we, we... In the game, uh, we had this... I don't want to say a problem, uh, but... The drones and fighters in general, uh, up until this implant has been released, didn't really have an implant to to basically be actively used for this. I know that I've been using the bombardment tactic in my test, Enemy ships but detected. of course, uh, I'm I'm well aware of the We're under attack. the cost of refueling the bombardment. It, it costs a lot, especially if it's high level. And all that kind of made it, let's say, not really cost-effective uh, to run. Uh, from my personal experience, sometimes I would uh, literally burn the implant to the ground, basically, like it would reach 0% fuel. And I would do maybe, maybe a couple of these laboratories, no, total, total, total risk is around like, let's say, 500 million or something. Refueling was 300 million, so basically most of the ease that you make goes to the implant, if you're using it. But if I'm not using it, the overall ISK in the end, with the bomber tactic, this is with the bomber tactic, right? not, not, not with this one, but with the bomber tactic, but, but without using it, I get about 400 million, but zero ISK spent for, the, for refueling anything. So... I ended up making more risk without using the implant. Of course, more DPS, yeah, it clears faster and that, but engaged. you have to refuel it if you keep if you want to use it. So, uh, in the in those tests, I figured out that not using the bomber tactic is actually producing more risk than than using it. Kind of funny because. That just, you know, when you include attack. the cost of refueling it, yeah, that's what happens, basically. I mean, honestly, we are under I attack. was kind of fine with that. I mean, the carriers are pretty capable ships, and they're still players' favorites for PvE, scrambled. especially in in no space. Well, if you're having this, if you're using the CN carrier, then in high sec, I guess. No, some would say that the CN cares potential is wasted in high sec, and I can see reasons why that is true. Although, although I don't really go uh, to tell players where they should fly a ship, I leave that to the player. If you want to fly the CN care in high sec, feel free to do so. If you want to fly it in low sec, feel free to do so. And if you like to fly it in mobile space, in in drone space, in no space, feel free to fly the CN carrier there as well. You are free to fly the ship however you like. No one should tell you where to go, how to go, and you know things like that. If you have fun with the CN carrier in high sec, then keep using it in high sec. That's just how you know how I look at things. Do what you like with the ship and basically, you know, have fun. That's the point of the game, to have fun. In my case, when I use a carrier, it's, in most cases, in, in deep null. Uh, kind of funny, because uh, I used to... I, I did have a CN carrier, that was one of my friends' CN carrier, that, bar that oh, I borrowed it. I returned it, but now I, I kind of want to have it back. As you know, uh, I actually like flying that thing. Surprisingly, it's relaxing. Honestly, could have done, could have, could do some live streams with it. 
I actually enjoyed the CNK live streams. It was they were really fun, honestly. They they were really fun. One of the most relax relaxing things that I've done. I also thought about doing the, the, the same thing attack. in no space, but <laughs> that's just knocking on death. That's like when when you when you see the Green Reaper, like that's like inviting the Green the Green Reaper to the front door. Live streaming a CN care in in deep no in lifetime with with no like stream delay. That's like inviting the Green Reaper and, and his friends to your front door. <laughs> that's not, that's a very very bad idea, and I actually thought about doing it because I I was I thought it would be funny, but no CN care in sight. I mean I could borrow one, but yeah, borrowing something that costs like a trillion isk is not something that I like to do. To be honest, I like to have my own. Well, I I could have I could have bought one. I had isk for it. But it's, I think it's a good choice that I didn't buy it because of, of a lot of things that have happened. And I kind of enjoy flying my cruisers now a bit more. So maybe down the road I'll, I'll get a CNK for, for live streams or something. We will see. In any case, uh, the, the Vazago, for now, uh, it's definitely, it definitely surpassed the CNK in how much DPS it applies, of course. The end result is the, not only dependent on the ship, but it's also dependent on on the on the ship, on the lightweight ships that on the drones, fighters, and lightweight ships that you're using. So yeah, uh, overall the performance of these ships, generally speaking, about the same. There's just you know little differences. Uh, if if you think that these little differences are Autopilot going to engaged. impact your end result with, with the ISK per hour thing, then I would say the, the Vazago is definitely a, a very good choice, especially now after the new implant has been released. And has it been improved? Oh yes, it was. This thing has been improved a lot. And its performance so far has been fantastic, so I have no complaints. It it, it clears. I mean, you, you saw it. I mean, I don't have to. I don't have to explain the obvious. This thing just shreds. It's amazing, uh, and the implant is for this ship at least, and for the CN carrier so far, it's been really good. So, with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed. If you would like to support me, feel free to like and subscribe. And with that being said, stay safe, fly safe, and as always. I'll see you next time.